Hello, everybody. Welcome to day nine of our shadow work 30 day challenge. I know today was a relatively easier day when it came to exercise. You only you got to pick between either doing 20 minute of Ashtanga nurses, beginner Ashtanga yoga or 30 minute bar with Marnie Alton, or you could have done both of them together. And I picked this specifically because I know that a lot of you are very sore from the kickboxing that we did yesterday. So let's go ahead and look at again your day today. So typical day as far as um, what we have been doing again, you have the lesser of the exercises because I know you're sore. As I said yesterday, it was very important for you to continue moving your body even in soreness. So that's why I only had you do 20 minutes of yoga or 30 minutes of bar was just to kind of flush to continue to flush from the work that you did yesterday with the kickboxing. Um, same thing you were doing a five minute cold shower at the end of your shower and then you were doing the all meditation again for the third day in a row. And then of course you have your journaling to do today. How has journaling your food changed your knowledge and awareness of what you're eating? Are you surprised by the effects of certain foods? I hope you're starting to notice and really take inventory of what you're journaling uh, by what you're eating. Um, are there any revelations about certain foods you're eating that you were not aware of before this challenge? Will you start to shift your eating habits to only the foods that affect your energy in a positive way? Now that you've tried three different types of exercises, which one do you like the best? Why? Do you notice a different feeling from different exercises? How is your soreness level? List five things you like about yourself. Look three people in the eyes and smile at them. And then, of course, every night it's the same, except for Friday nights, it's different because you have your oil bath. But then tomorrow is a big day because tomorrow is November 10th, which means that you are a third of the way through the challenge. That's amazing. You're already a third of a way, the way in. You got this. Look how far you've come. And this might be interesting because some of you might be experiencing burnout at this point or agitation, but that's why in the beginning I talked about motivation versus discipline. This is when the discipline sets in because the motivation might be waning now. So at this new challenge, you're going to have some milestones. So tomorrow, if you don't make up your bed every morning, start doing that now. Start making your bed up every morning. Um, your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. So this is the new challenge as well we're going to add in. It's no snacking after 7 p.m. This allows you your, you your digestive system at least 12 hours of rest between dinner and breakfast. And this is super, super, super important. And you might start noticing if you stop eating after 7 you might notice when you wake up in the morning, you'll have even more energy because your digestive system has had the, the opportunity to rest and really cleanse your system out before you go about your day. Now, exercise tomorrow. You have kickboxing again. So that's why today there was a very small exercise because you're going back to the kickboxing tomorrow, which I'm super interested to see how this feels for you tomorrow because yesterday... So many things came up for people with the kickboxing. That was a big one. I didn't realize that kickboxing was going to be this effective as it was with you guys. Now, um, you have the option to add in Ashtanga Nurses Beginner Yoga. And of course, if that is too much for you, then you can do the 45-minute bar. Once again, you're going to be doing your five-minute cold shower. And now you have a choice for meditation. So now that you've done three days of all meditation straight and sound bowl healing, you get to pick between the two which one you want to do. Now, for those who are feeling lots of agitation with the all meditation, I would encourage you to pick the all meditation because the things that you struggle with, the things that are the hardest for you are typically the ones that are creating the most friction and that's where you really need to lean into it. So I would encourage you to do the all meditation even if it pisses you off, okay? You're going to do your food journal again. And again, the food journal is going to happen every single day for the rest of the uh, challenge except for Thanksgiving. If you're an American celebrating Thanksgiving, you get a day off of food journaling on that day. Tomorrow, you're 10 days in. How are you feeling? Tired, exciting, excited? Is anger rising? If so, that's okay. If you're new to exercise, how has the exercise changed you? What has it taught you? What is something new that you learned about yourself that you can expand upon in your journal? How do you feel about the next 20 days? Or have your intentions changed? Are there any goals that you want to set for yourself in the next 20 days that are not a part of the challenge? List five things you like about yourself. Go back and review the three things you wrote in your journal a few days ago. Have these three things shifted? What else have they, have they taught you? Look three people in the eyes and smile at them. Now you have a new challenge here too. Is there an old friend or family member you've lost touch with? If so, send them a simple text or email telling them that you're thinking about them. You hope they're well and you love them. Please note you can do this for multiple people. This is super important. 
All I'm asking you to do is to reach out to at least one person in your life that you've lost touch with. That's it. And then tomorrow we're going to talk about that more. And so this might be really hard for some people to do. And so that's why it's a challenge. All right, you guys, something has come up. With that being said, now we're going to close out and go to the next topic at hand. So something that's been discussed a lot in our signal group is this idea of Molabunda. And earlier today, I was on with Shanti on solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa. I'll link that episode below where we also spoke about Molabunda. And this is the root lock. So this is the lock that lives in the perineum. This connects to Udiana Bunda, which is in the navel. It's the pulling back and pulling up of energy. This is the pelvic floor. This is the core control. And this is a, a common theme you see throughout all exercise, all sports, and all modalities. Now, with exercises like bar or Pilates, they might not call it Mola Bunda or Udiana Bunda. They'll probably, in bar, they call it the pelvic floor. In Pilates, they call it the powerhouse. You'll see it called different things. But this is super, super, super important. It's like a Kegel exercise. It's a pulling up. Now, once again, we went into great detail over this over on Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa. So I will... Again, leave that video linked down in the description box below if you want to watch that. But now coming up, I this morning did a 60 minute bar class with Marnie Alton and I filmed myself. Now I was on my mat for about 75 minutes because the one thing I that I don't like about the bar is the the stretching. Um, we do more in yoga. So typically what I do when I do Marnie Alton's bar classes is I'll do like 15 minutes of Ashtanga to warm my body up before I move into the bar, okay? And so, but what I did with this bar class is I actually filmed myself to show you guys in this particular class that I picked was geared towards the pelvic floor or geared to towards the Bunda, hence why I picked it. So I filmed myself doing it, I cut it. So you're not watching the full, the full workout with me, just different sections so that you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So that you can use my body as a way to inform your own body of how to correct how to course correct, how to find that power. If you're flopping around without control on your mat, you have no Bunda support. We need to find that Bunda support, that perineum support and that core support. And so hopefully that's what you're going to see in the next section. And hopefully that's what you learned from our episode today with Shanti. With that being said, let's go into my bar workout. All right, as you can see, everybody, it's dark 30 a.m. for me as I'm starting this this class, this 60-minute uh, bar class with Marnie Alton on her website, Embody. I usually do some stretching before I start the practice. I've already done heavy stretching, but I'm just at this point waiting for her to actually start. Now, as you know, Marnie Alton has a start by shaking out. As you can see, the hips are moving. This is really important for the hip socket. And um, I had to mute the music, guys, just because of copyright, because she does use uh, big, big names in her playlist, which are fun. <laughs> They're fun songs. But um, obviously, I can't have them playing on my YouTube where I get a copyright strike. So um, yeah, this is how she starts off. We talked about this. She starts off with a little bit of aerobic just to get the blood flowing, to get the joints to start to be a little bit less um, sticky, especially first thing in the morning. And that's this running she does also helps get the lymphatic system start to prepare for the work. And if you missed the video where I talked about anaerobic versus aerobic, I believe that was day one where I spoke about this. I'll put that video down in the description box below because anaerobic is what we're mostly doing in bar and in yoga. Now this is obviously aerobic because it's getting the heart rate up. It's getting the blood moving, the sacred blood flow, which is your sacred DNA to be able to move into the joints and to start to heal the joints. Um, I really actually really like Marnie Alton's warmups because they're very intelligently designed um, as far as getting the blood to flow and then going into anaerobic. Now with aerobic, as I said in day one, with the aerobics, your body is looking towards oxygen to burn for energy versus anaerobic where you are actually burning glucose or stuck stuck fat, like cellulite, stuck emotion. And we're going to talk about that more when we get deeper into this practice with Marnie. Now I'm going to be cutting this practice. I did, I actually was on my mat for about 75 minutes this morning because I always do my own little thing first with um, some yoga stuff, but I didn't film that. Um, I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to cut out the dead stuff, the stuff that 
uh, the repetitive stuff on each side so you don't have to, no one wants to watch me exercise for 75 minutes. So I'm going to cut some of that stuff out so that you guys can just see the important stuff of what I'm talking about when I talk about Mola Bunda and Udiana Bunda because bar is big with Mola and Udiana Bunda. Now this stuff, these pelvic rolls that she does, I'm going to be honest with you guys, when I first started doing bar, these made me really uncomfortable because I had to do them by myself. So the fact that I can do them on video now is, is a breakthrough for me because we've been taught such shame in that area of the body for women. And so for me to be able to do this on camera shows how much healing I've done. And that's the thing about Molabunda and Udiana Bunda, especially Molabunda. Molabunda is in the perineum. So it's in your crotch. It is literally in your crotch for both men and women. It's the it's the root lock. And so it locks the energy of Kundalini. And that is what, when after you have a child, when you leak, that just means your molabunda is weak. And we can strengthen it through exercises like bar, like yoga. Now, health-wise, this is going to create a stronger spine. It's going to, obviously, you never want to pee your pants in public, so that's going to help with that too. But spiritually, it's going to start to pull the energy of kundalini up the spine. And so... I think I stop here to go turn the fan on because it's, uh, yep, and I turn the light on, then I gotta turn the light right back off again with the fan on because I don't wanna wake my neighbors up. Um, and my dog also sleeps when I do this. She has you uh, start with back bending to open up the stomach, stretching out the stomach. Sometimes the back bending segment's a little bit longer than that. And then stretching out the hamstrings before we get into the bulk of the movement. So the very last part of the warm up, she has you do calf raises and these are very important because the calf muscle is like the second heart. And so the calf is responsible for getting your blood from your lower body back to your heart so your heart can cleanse the blood and send it back in through the body for your own healing. Now we're going to look at the little bit of aerobics she does here because I actually like her aerobics. As we're doing hip thrust here, we're bending the knees, squatting, coming up. This is bringing blood flow into the hip. And so even though the bundas are, are based around really your breath, um, it's important to also get the blood flow back into the hips to help trigger that breath to pull up in the bunda. And that's what she's doing here. It's just like a five minute little dance choreography that she creates. And for this one specifically, she has you do the uh, salsa because we are going to be focusing a lot in this particular class on the pelvic floor, which is again, mola bunda. So if you can see my abs are contracted. So we're constantly pulling our stomach in in order to keep that control of the spine. I know a lot of people have messaged or have talked about in the signal group um, about having back issues. And I have back issues as well. I have multiple herniated discs. I've had back surgery before, but I experience zero back pain right now. Why is that? Because I exercise and because I'm constantly strengthening my core and strengthening my glutes, which we're gonna get to as well. And so if your back is in pain, the last thing you want to do is rest. That's the worst, absolute worst thing that you can do for your body is to not exercise. You've got to get your core strong. Your core isn't just your abdominal system, it's also your back as well. And a lot of times when we start doing work and we start to get, as I've said before, get that spine strong, all those muscles that go into atrophy as children then start to strengthen again. And that those, those muscles can be sore. So sometimes we confuse back pain for sore muscles. Sore muscles are okay. It, I promise you, being sore, I'm sore doing this right now. I've been sore for 16 years. And I love it because it means that my body is turned on. It means that it's activated. Now, if I'm going to be completely honest, this section that she does every class is my least favorite part, but it's probably the most vital and the most important. She's going to have us do squ uh, squats. We're opening the spine right now, moving, which is going to get into Molabunda. I'll be able to show you that better when we get to the bar work, but she's going to have you actually go into these squats. So your legs are a little bit wider than your hips. Your toes are facing forward. All four corners of your foot is on the mat. Your glutes are engaged, and you do these squats, and what's happening is when you're pressing into the big toe, we're really starting to wake up Molabunda here because the big toe is associated with the perineum, just like the arch of the foot is associated with Uriana Bunda. And so as you press into your big toe, that line of energy comes up through the inner thigh into your crotch and pulls 
up into the crotch. Uriana Bunda means to fly up. So Mola Bunda is the base lock. Uriana Bunda is pulling up with Mola Bunda. It's like you're doing a Kegel. You're pulling energy up into your spine, up into your solar plexus. And man, does it burn like hell. I She does about 100 of these each class, each hour class. I've counted, trust me, I've counted them. And they're my least favorite I'm always like, ah, shit, when they come up, but I know that they're the most important to do. And that's one thing that you'll start to learn. The more uh, autonomy you get in, in practicing and exercising, the more you understand the things that you hate the most are usually the things that you have to do the most. Right now, we're just flushing before she brings us into deeper squats, into like a, ball a ballet type pirouette. And I'm actually gonna not show you on the first side, because I think the first side is gonna be too far away from the camera. I'll uh, allow the camera to get to the other side, so I'm gonna cut here so we can look and see what she is doing. Actually, never mind. Uh, going back and watching the footage, um, <laughs> It, you can actually see pretty well from this side. So the, the front, the right leg is in a bent, kind of a, a, a ballet pirouette or whatever you call it in ballet. And the left leg is coming forward. Now in a minute, I'm going to lift my, my knee up. And I want you to notice my net, my toe is pointed, so it's not it's not like a flailing free for all flop shot. There has to be control here. So the toe being pointed in this expression means that there's control in the calf. There's also control in my hip, and so it's getting that movement into the hip as well as activating the side obliques to be able to once again start to burn away any type of bad patterning I have in my body, which once again always connects to Mola and Uriana Bunda. It's I always tell my yoga students it's like in church if you didn't know the answer you if you said Jesus nine times out of ten you were correct well in yoga if you don't know the answer nine times out of ten it's the bundas right here she's tucking so I'm showing you I backed up a little bit so you could see I'm pulling my, my, my pelvis back and it's pulling my abdominal forward. These are pelvic tucks these are strands I'm showing you with my, my finger it's pulling up Back and up, back and up. That's what Mola and Uriana, Mola and Uriana Bunda work together. It's a back and up flying sensation, a flying up from the base of the Bunda, which is the base of Kundalini. Now we're just squatting. So the way the legs are positioned, it's going to activate again the inner thigh. So I triggered the uh, Mola Bunda by doing those pelvic tucks. Now I'm triggering in a different way by once again pressing in to my big toe in order to activate the inner thigh to continue that pulling up experience through the torso. Now we're coming into a flush before we get to the other side. All right. And we do this in yoga too. Proper yoga, you have to flush between sides because the H side carries a different karma. So that's what she's doing here. She's flushing you. So like in yoga, you take a jump back, jump through between each side of the posture. Here she's going to have you do these little, these little jumps yourself just to kind of flush the blood so that we tackle the other side. We're not... Sorry, that's my dog. We're not carrying the karma from one side over to the other side. We're going back to the squats, setting the feet up to once again trigger the inner thigh, which once again is the base of Malabunda. You can see I'm really sweating now. I'm a heavy sweater. The fitter you get, the more you're going to sweat. Okay, People who are not in shape have a hard time sweating. So the fitter you are, the faster your body is going to turn on and start sweating. Because we need the sweat. The sweat's the detox. You need to sweat. Sweating is good for you. I had a student once at AOA who was a f terrified of sweating. They, she thought if she, she was sweating that something was wrong. No, your body is actually working properly. It's detoxing. As my teacher says, it's pushing the poisons out of you. When we clean gold, we have to boil the gold. So I'm, I'm boiling my body right now, getting it hot. And then... The, the, my body will start the purification process by pushing toxins out of my, my poisons out of my skin, which looks like sweat. And then after I work out, obviously I'll go and take a shower and I'm going to be able to wash that sweat off. Once again, flushing, another flush here before we get to the other side. Actually, the first part of bar exercise is never my favorite. I know a lot of people say they don't like cardio. I don't not like cardio. I'm good at cardio because I have O negative blood. And when they're looking for athletes, they always look for O negative blood because O negative blood has more oxygen. I have more oxygen in my blood than most people. Um, so I, I can handle cardio for my breathing purposes. Now, the Vata cardio is not that great for me, but I, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of it. And so that's what I want to say too to people just because you don't like something. As I said earlier, usually what you don't like is what you need to be doing. Okay? 
right? So if, if the cardio is hard for you, focus it. Now you can definitely see my sweat here coming off of me. So we're doing the other side now. I'm warming up my hip before I start to lift my knee. I usually do about eight with the foot on the floor before I come up with the knee just to get my body to stabilize. We always want to get the foundation to stabilize. Yep, there we go. Now my knee's coming up. And again, this is still considered the warm-up for bar. Kind of like yoga, we have a really long warm-up before we actually get into, into the series. So this is why, and she does color therapy, like you'll see on her screen. In the beginning, it's like a purple color, which is joining the oxygen, bringing the oxygen and the blood alive into the body. And then when we get to the actual bar, the real anaerobic work, it goes into red, which is fire. So you can see now here, I'm doing this again with the other leg leading, pulling in. I'm showing you how I'm pulling back and up, back and up. That's what's happening. I'm back, pulling back to the spine and up the spine, back the spine and up the spine. Okay, and she has you do this quite a lot in this particular uh, class, which is why I picked this class to do with you so that we could talk about, really look at the function of Mola Bunda. All right, so I'm putting down, I've talked about this, my yoga carpet, because I do get very sweaty, so that's my carpet. And we're actually gonna be moving into the weight section. She does do weights in this, and I am a firm believer on the lighter weights, so I only use two pound weights because we don't wanna be so bulky that we can't move our body. Now, I, normally in, in this, I would not, I would cut this out, the weight part, especially since we're talking about bundas, but she actually has you come into the squat here, and what that's doing is actually forcing, again, Mola and Udiana Bunda. So the fact that my legs are out and open, it's forcing my perineum to pull up. Now, at this point, she's actually gonna have you do tucks again. So you're doing those tucks with your legs in a squat that is forcing Mola Bunda and Udiana Bunda again to activate. So I want you guys to see that. You can't be in a squat like this without your perineum being engaged. And so that's allowing the perineum. And so we're just gonna cut the rest of the weights here because I just wanted you guys to see that. And we're gonna go to the bar work now. So after you do the weight, she does have you do some stretching, which I do like. That's what I like about one of her bar, the way she teaches. She does have you do a, a hardcore, fiery action, and then you do the release with the stretching. With that being said, when we stretch, we're not passively stretching. And I was going to cut this bit out. Um, frankly, the one part about the stretching with bar that I don't like is that it's not the same. There's the intensity of the stretch that you have in bar is not the same as in yoga. And so for me, that's why I have to do a little bit extra before and after the, the class is because my body is used to going in a more extreme um, extreme mobility. And so I have to continue to do that to keep, keep, to keep it balanced with the yoga, if that makes sense. But I am going to leave this up, uh, the stretching part up when we get to the bar too, because I want you guys to see what I mean when I talk about active stretching. Okay, so somebody asked in an earlier video if we need a ballet bar, and I said no. I'm literally using my table in the middle of my kitchen. Now look at my foot. My foot is flexed. This is super important because that's keeping all the muscles active as I go to stretch. We're starting off with a twist here. So we want to keep the muscles engaged. Passive stretching is injury coming. Active stretching is more protected in the body. And it also is going to allow the energy in the body to actually move when the muscles are engaged. Now again, for me, this type of stretching is not that big of a deal. This is super basic stretching compared to what we do in Ashtanga Yoga. But that's okay. That's why, again, I, I do my stretching at the beginning and at the end, deeper yoga stretches just to keep my body mobile for yoga. But these are ballet stretches. The hips are squared. I actually even pull on my foot to keep that, to make sure that foot is staying completely active. We're opening out here. I'm keeping my foot active. Now, this is one of my favorite stretches she does, though, in a second. I'm going to turn my body. It's a deep hip stretch. So my body is coming down to the side of my foot with my foot still flex. It's getting into the back of the hip. And then the foot's going to come back to center. And we're going to continue here stretching over that right leg. Now, when, when I always start with the right leg myself because I know from yoga, uh, right is the aponic moving side. So we want to take our twisting on the right first uh, because the downward, uh, the colon, that's moving down is moving on the right side. And so if we twist left first, we, we run the risk of like constipation and that kind of stuff. So we wanna assist the natural movement of the body. So twisting right first is always necessary. Now we're coming to the left side. 
Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. Each side of your body is going to give you a different response. My left side of my body is way, way, way tighter than the right side of my body, which is weird because I'm right-handed. But I think I told you guys I have major left hip issues energetically, which has caused my right shoulder to be a little bit unstable too. And so for me, the left side is where the real work happens. Obviously, I'm gonna balance it with the right, of course. I'm pulling my toe back to make sure my leg is totally active here. Um, but this is super important to understand that your, the sides of your body are going to give you two different stories. And this is why we always do the, uh, the flush between sides because here's a better view of, of that great hip stretch I was telling you about. Um, that's why we have to do a flush is because there's different energies on both sides of the body. And so we have to honor both en energies as individual lessons. Again, right side is masculine. Left side is feminine energy. That doesn't mean that every left side injury has to do with your mom or every right side injury has to do with your dad. It's, it's really your feminine, your masculine, okay? And so that's, that's what we're learning with the energetic body. All right, boys and girls, now we're getting into the bulk of what I love about bar. And you're gonna see me adjust the camera a few times here to try to give you the best view. So this is really triggering that mullabunda. Even if you don't do bar, if you grab a ball and do these exercises, that's gonna help you get in touch with mullabunda. So I'm up on my toes and I'm bending my knees and I'm squeezing the ball and pulling my hips in. Sorry about all the camera moving, guys. I'm trying to find the best angle possible. I think this is where I stop it and actually readjust the camera just to make sure that you guys can really, really see what I'm talking about. Okay, so squeezing that ball is forcing the inner thigh as I'm pointing out to work. So I'm squeezing, I'm on the tiptoes, so I'm being forced. I'm being forced by the shape of my body to have to press into my big toe. So by pressing into my big toe and squeezing that ball, it's going straight into my perineum, straight into my crotch, which is making that mullabunda even stronger. Now the deeper I pull, she's not going to have me, you contract squeezing the knees, pulling the belly in. So again, that's the, the combination of Uriana and Mullabunda. So I'm hoping that's starting to make more sense seeing that visual. All the muscles are active. This is also the anaerobic work, okay? So contrary to popular belief from like the 80s and the 90s, if you wanna lose weight, do this shit. Don't do aerobics, do this. Because this is what's burning energy, stored energy. As I said from the day one video, aerobics is just using oxygen or whatever it can get to burn. But this is very controlled. This is a very controlled movement and so it's getting those muscles to actually get into your stored energy to start to burn it. And now she's having you twirl your hips again. Holding the ball, it's gonna force more of an activation. Holding the ball between the legs, up on the balls of the feet. This is. Uh, causing way more activation in Mulabunda for the body to be able to perform this movement, okay? And that, si that, that cycle of energy, that spiral of energy, is that, that life force, especially the feminine life force that we have in all of us. Masculine energy is very linear. Feminine energy is very reciprocal. Uh, we carry both. Each sex carries both energy. And so doing this, the cycles are also, also giving you that reciprocal feminine movement of blood. Now we're just going up and down, really forcing the knees to squeeze that ball. That is what that ball is for. That ball is for your bunda. Now, as I said earlier, I am cutting some of this so that you can uh, not have to watch the full thing, so I just cut. Now my legs are in like a diamond shape with my heels touching, and we're doing a different rotation with Mola Bunda and the hips in a different way. So you can kind of see up in my hands, so you can kind of see what's happening. Now that there's stability, we're doing the up and down again to, again, activate the inner thigh. I just want to reiterate, though, guys, don't practice along with me with this video because I'm cutting it. Um, this is not the full workout. I'm just using parts of it to kind of show you what Mullabunda activation, Uniana back activation actually looks like so that you can then translate that into your own practices and into your own workouts. 
Okay, once again, I'm cutting. I just want to show you guys. We moved to the floor to do some glute exercises on the floor, which is super important for back pain, super important for uh, hip flexibility. I wanted to show you that we are doing this side. I am going to cut some of it out so you can see it better on the other side. But I wanted to point out that she has you do one side of the glute. So right now I'm working my right side. And then we're going to get up again off the floor before we go to the left side, which is going to allow for, again, another flush before going to the right side. All right, so now I'm back up again. We're moving to a flush now. I've got my lip, my legs zipped together, which is going to help, again, activate uh, Malabunda, which is what we do in Ashtanga. We have our legs zipped together. That's that same activation like holding that ball that's pulling up, pulling up Malabunda, pulling up Udi Anabunda. And again, this uh, practice in particular, this exercise in particular, on her website, she's really, really focusing on this. Now, in yoga, we call it the energetic body of the locks is Mola and Udiyana Bunda. But in a bar class, you're probably not going to hear the teacher call it this or a Pilates teacher call it this. They're probably going to call it something like the pelvic floor. That might be something that you've heard people mention before, activating that pelvic floor region. That's Mola Bunda. That's the Kegel. And once again, just to reiterate, we're, we're moving our hips again. Mola Bunda connects directly to Uddiyana Bunda. It locks up and it pulls back and up. So if you think about that spine, the moving back and up of energy. And this is coming, even though it looks very physical, it's also coming from that breath work, okay? And this is a this is a, uh, a concept, the bundas, that you're going to be constantly working with throughout your whole time in an energetic practice. There's never going to be a point where you're done discovering Mola Bunda, where you're done discovering Uddiyana Bunda. All right, so I cut again back now to the left leg that we're working. And I want you to notice that even in doing this, so many people, especially when they don't have any autonomy over their body or don't know their body, would do something like this in a very sloppy way, meaning that they wouldn't be engaged in the muscles. They would just be flailing around, flailing their leg up, which is not what we want to do. Now, if you do do that and you get hurt, then that's an injury. That's a lesson to teach you how to strengthen. But we're constantly protracting the floor away from, from us. We're keeping the legs, all everything's engaged. Core is pulled up. So even when I'm lifting up my back leg, my core is still pulling up. I'm going to adjust the camera here so you can see better. Um, even with this practice of working on the side obliques, everything is engaged. You see my arm muscles engaged. All, both of my legs are engaged. There's no flailing. So that's what I want to tell you guys, especially if you're now over a week into this challenge. If you ask yourself when you're doing any of these modalities of exercise, are you flailing? Because if you're flailing, there's no control. And if there's no control, there's no mola or uriana bunda. And so I want you guys to start to think about that. Is my, are my muscles engaged? Am I doing this in a controlled way, right? Am I sweating? That muscle control, you can see the sweat, even with the dark light, the dark 30 night, you can see the muscles on, or the um, sweat coming off of my body there. You can see it glistening. All right, that sweat is going to cause that purge. And so I want you guys to really, really be aware of that. Um, stop moving away from the flop shop. Get into that control because that, again, is where the healing happens. Now, I love this particular movement. This really helps my back. It really helps my back release pain because it's causing some clearing in the hip as well as strengthening the core. And you can see here with this one too, my back left is my back leg is lifting in total control on purpose. It's being mobilized and used on purpose. You can see my glute squeeze when the leg comes up. That's on purpose. Total utter control. All right, so I cut again so you didn't have to watch the whole thing. This is I do this periodically for myself, especially we're about to get to planks. I'm just stretching out my ribs just to make sure the blood is moving through my rib cage before we get up into the plank. And as we talked about in our plank video a while ago, 
when you're protracting and retracting the shoulders, you are engaging the bundas. So the arms do have something to do with this as well. And you're going to see this now. Planks, I know I, I talk about planks a lot, but planks are not my favorite thing. A lot of these things, even though I've been doing this for a really long time, a lot of these things are not enjoyable for me. Um, I have to find the joy in it. I have to love the work for the sake of the work, just like the Bhagavad Gita tells us. I have to be in the moment. You can see the sweat coming off of me, and I have to be happy to be here and happy to be confronting all of this work. We're in a heart to heart plank, which means the index finger and the thumb are touching under the heart of my body. So my arms are pushing away from the floor. I'm pushing into my fingertips. My legs are active. You see how my legs are active? My butt isn't dropped, right? It's it's in a, a literal plank. Now we're going to do some a few push-ups here. So I'm not going all the way to the floor because I want to keep everything engaged. I don't want to drop. That's why I'm not going all the way to the floor is I'm keeping everything engaged. Now we're stretching into those hips. But even as I'm stretching, look at my back foot. It's active. My back foot is active. My shoulders are active. So we're as I'm talking about actively stretching. Look at, look at my muscles. They're still active. Okay, because passive stretching is a no-no. Passive stretching does nothing. It does fuck all for you but injure you. Active stretching. Now we're going to come to more plank work. I'm actually going to move. I see myself moving my carpet now because I'm not jumping anymore. Put my towel, my, my lungi, my binding towel, my lungi. I don't use it to bind anymore. I don't need help binding, but I, it's my lungi for my sweat. And so now I'm going to really work into the core. And this is going to come. These are killers. Usually I do about 100 of these a day. Uh, op, uh, knee to opposite elbow to get the cross patterning of the core. Why is the core so important? Well, again, for your physical, it helps protect your back. But for your emotional, the core is the first, it houses the first three chakras. Yeah, so if you have a weight issue, if you're pudgy in the belly, then you need to be looking at the first three chakras, which we're gonna be studying this Saturday, okay? The muscles there in the core are very thin muscles, right? They're very, very thin muscles, and so, with that being said, that's to give your organs a chance to actually move. But that's why we also need to constantly be working to keep the core strong. It, you know, everything else in your body, you can cut your arms off, cut your legs off, and still live your life. But you can't cut your torso out. That's a very, very sacred area, right? And so it needs to be honored as such and worked on. You need to work on it. And again, I'm back doing the knees to the elbows. This is killer. Um, again, I'm pushing. You can see I'm pushing away from the floor. That's keeping that protraction. And for the rest of the practice, guys, I'm just going to let you watch what you want to watch. If there's something that I need to point out, I will pop in and say. But hopefully, you can use my body here as a teaching modality to try to help you figure out how to grant and receive that power in your own practice. Thank you.